Hey folks, so today I wanted to talk about uh, photographing sunsets or sunrises um, as straight out of camera as much as possible. So I'm going to start with um, talking about doing it straight out of camera, but I'm also later on in the video going to show you a little bit about how I would edit uh, some of the photos in uh, Lightroom just to um, enhance them. And um, I mean, let me explain first uh, the challenges of photographing um, sunsets and sunrises. Um, and essentially the biggest challenge is that they're what we would call like high dynamic range images, uh, unless you are right before the sunrise or the sunset when the sun's just on the horizon, which is actually the best time to get the beautiful colors. Um, so if you're on what we would term the golden hour, which is the hour before sunset and a little bit afterwards, and um, or the hour before sunrise and hour just after these, the golden hours, uh, where the sun's just just coming up above the horizon or uh, and you've got all the lovely colors in the sky um, the the difficulty is as the more the sun rises the dynamic range in the imaging um, increases now if you've got a mobile phone this will illustrate the point to you so i'd try this um, obviously never look directly at the sun but if you use your mobile phone look at the screen um, and then the sunset or sunrise You'll notice on the more modern mobile phones, the image seems to expose beautifully. The um, shadows are um, brought out and you can see detail in them. And indeed, in the, um, the sky, you usually get the colour exposed correctly. And this is because the mobile phone can do, for want of a better word, it's doing a kind of bracketing. It's AI photography. Um, it's able to take multiple exposures and stitch them together inside the device and you get a resulting picture. Now with a camera, you can't do that. Um, and if you're not post-processing, it's limited to what you can do. So I've picked some sample images, which were probably taken about 30 minutes before, 20, 30 minutes before sunset. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the image which was taken um, straight out of camera. And all I've done to it, is use the camera's in uh, capability for processing images from RAW. This is why you should shoot RAW in camera for your JPEGs. Um, and I've used that so that I can then uh, RAW process the image and just increase it by one EV. There are other tweaks you can do with regards to the shadows and highlights using the curves on some cameras. And I'm talking from experience of using the X-T4 or majority of Fujifilm cameras that have the X-Trans 4 sensor um, but it should work in theory on other cameras and their raw processors depending on what you've got but most can most cameras that don't have curves and things like that are able to increase the sharpness of the image the clarity and how soft the image is as well uh, or something similar and indeed the actual exposure by stops as they're called for want of a better word, one stop is like going from f2.8 to f4 would be a stop um, down in light. It would get darker. Funnily enough, as the as f stops get higher, <laughs> the image get the aperture gets smaller, so less lights let in. I'll do another video on that. So as you can see from uh, from the image, um, it's come out all right, and we've got lovely silhouettes. Um, now I'm going to bring up the image that I processed in Lightroom. Um, and you'll see what I've been able to do is I've del deliberately kept the shadows um, in silhouette uh, because this image works better in silhouette and a lot of sunsets actually um, do. Um, uh, but what I have been able to do is I've been able to soften the, the sun with what's called a radial filter and uh, change the contrast on the horizon with a brush filter and you can see that I brought these up on the screen now in Lightroom and I can turn them on off and you should be able to see um, the subtle differences uh, that it makes. So what are the, um, the problems of taking a picture? Well literally all you can really do is expose for the sun itself Generally speaking, if you want to bring things back from the shadows, um, you can do that more easily than bringing back highlights. So if you try and expose and say, oh, I want to bring out the highlight, the, the person or the subject, and I don't want a silhouette, 
you have to overexpose the sky unless you're using another light source. Like for instance, I have over here um, a, a continuous light to illuminate this side of me. And this side of me is illuminated by the natural light from the window. Um, had I not got this light, um, this side of me will be exposed, but this side will be underexposed. So I'm controlling the light. Now when you're out there and you don't have anything other than a camera and you don't want to faff on with flash, which a lot of people don't, a lot of you guys who watch just the JPEG shooters, then it is limited what you can do. But you can play with the raw processor to try and bring the shadows up with the curves or just bring the exposure up a little bit. Because if you've already underexposed the sunset by around about a stop of light, as they call it, um, then when you bring it up, the sun is still not overexposed and you don't get that horrible white blob in the sky that is the sun and then the nice colours around it. But what you're aiming to do with the sunset is slightly underexpose it or sunrise so that if you need to increase the um, exposure after you've taken the picture um, to tweak it in camera, uh, you've got that flexibility. But equally, as you've seen from Photoshop, uh, if you do choose to uh, edit in Lightroom or you want to do that, you've got to look much more latitude because in Photoshop I can slide the shadows up, much more control over the shadows and I can then consequently I can change the exposure but I can bring the highlights down, I can select different portions of the image as you've seen with the masks. Um, so I've got more control over the fine tuning of the image and different portions of it. Um, and I just wanted to bring two other images up here where there was two people sitting in front of me. The first image you're going to see is just again straight out of camera and it's nice but the people on the left are underexposed and notice the picture on the dog's face. The dog is facing away from the light, it's got some light, nice highlights on, on it as the, as the sun, setting sun you know, makes the sort of edge of the people illuminated and you know, creates a lovely soft light. But we want to see the dog's face and that's quite hard to do because if we bump up the shadows uh, or the exposure in order to expose the dog's face, we risk starting to blow out the highlights. It's very difficult to do in camera, but you could improve it. You know, you could boost the shadows a little bit um, and, uh, and do that. But if I bring the other picture up here and I've used similar um, tricks in Lightroom where I've masked off the people in the left with a brush filter as I showed you earlier and then I've just brought up the um, exposure in just that area of the image and then I've created another mask on the dog because it was even more underexposed so that I could bring that up a little bit more and have very fine control over the exposure so I can bring out a little bit of detail in the dog's face. So at the same time as I, um, I'm hoping this is helping you learn how to use the curves and the, uh, ex the exposure um, controls in post-processing in your camera if you don't want to use Lightroom. It was just to illustrate that in order to get that extra little bit of control in a high dynamic range situation, you are generally going to have to play with something like Lightroom or some form of third-party post-processing. But I've got a little caveat to this as well, and it's not necessarily to do with the high dynamic range, but it is to do with making the image a little bit more soft and enhancing things. So if you don't want ultra sharp images, and I don't believe sunsets have to be, I use a CineSoft filter. I will link below um, the specifications to it. It's not like a strong CineSoft filter, and we're filming on it now. Um, when I do street photography, I use a, a strong Cine soft filter and they, they diffuse the highlights and they blow them out a bit. So if you have slightly blown out the image in your sunset and the highlights, because the Cine soft filter makes it all soft around that and it tends to blow highlights out, it has the same effect as me turning the clarity down in Lightroom, as I showed you earlier, with the... Um, there is like a radial filter or a brush filter. So there are tricks to doing it where you can do it in camera. And I would, you know, I've shown you some videos on the CineSoft filter. Um, and they, they have lots of applications and they're a fun 
filter to uh, to play with. They come in lots of different grades, and they're not expensive. I think I think the one I've got on here was probably about twenty five pounds. I don't know what it is now. I bought it a while ago, and I know stuff's going up in cost. But this is a lot cheaper than a subscription to, to Lightroom. And one area I'm going to go into now as well is I want to show you a picture, lastly, that I took probably about 12 years ago. And I just got my first, well, my second camera, uh, my second, my first um, APS-C cropped camera. It was a um, Canon 650D. And I took this picture nearby a place called St. Mary's Lighthouse. It's just, the lighthouse isn't in the shot, but it was taken at sunrise on a cold January morning. And I have post-processed it. And I'm going to show you the image, first of all, before the processing. Um, and you'll see that it's not as saturated and the rocks, which are the foreground subject, which are very important to making up the image, just as important as the clouds, are not as well defined. And now when I bring up the processed image, you'll see the difference you can make in post-processing. Now, if I was trying to adjust that in camera, I would risk blowing out the detail in the clouds, and it would be very, much, much harder to do that. Changing it in curves in the camera gives you a little bit more control. So essentially the, the, the message in this video is that you absolutely can do this um, in camera, um, but you will get arguably, in my opinion, better results doing it in post-processing. However, I think if you're using like a CineSoft filter, you will get certainly more creative results. So whether you want to do it in Lightroom or mess around with the filter and in-camera controls, which is a lot easier and quicker, um, I would leave that up to you. But the idea of this video is to show you that you can do it in both in-camera and get some beautiful sunsets and kind of get similar to what um, a mobile phone can do. Um, or you can do it in post-processing in Lightroom or something similar and have a real play around with it. Um, and it's enjoyable to do both. Um, so, I would love you to have a chat in the comments below about it. Please do ask questions. Um, I'll see if I can link to some of the images so you can have a look at them in more detail. I'll see if I can put them up somewhere, not straight away with the uh, the video, but they should be up soon. I might put them on, I think it's Vimeo or whatever it's called, the new sharing platform, or I might put them on a Dropbox link so you can download them and, and have, have a look at them. Um, but anyway, I hope you got value from this. Um, and I'll be doing another video as soon as I uh, can. Um, and if you got value from the video, please do like, subscribe and if you really want annoying notifications, click the bell as well. Anyway, folks, I'll see you all later. Bye.